Um, let me just introduce myself. My name is uh, Harish Supramanian. I'm uh, a co-director of the PGP in Big Data Analytics program uh, here at Great Learning. Uh, I'm here to talk today about uh, two fundamental topics. One is, uh, you know, the art of big data. So, what exactly is big data? What is, you know, what is big data in the context of analytics? Um, and what's the difference between all of these different areas? And secondly, uh, and more per and and more targetedly, I'd like to talk about a little bit towards the end about the big data analytics program that we offer and how that fits into the grand scheme of things. Uh, just to introduce uh, myself a little further, um, I have a background, I have a fairly varied background. Um, you know, I've worked in uh, machine learning in the context of, uh, you know, financial markets as well as uh, behavioral economics myself. Uh, subsequently worked in, um, uh, in management consulting where we saw, solved some of the client problems using both big data as well as, you know, extremely small data uh, analytics uh, techniques. Um, and, and now uh, I'm here running some of the programs uh, to help others climb up uh, that same ladder. Okay, so you know, I'm going to be rather quick about this particular slide, but I just wanted to put up what some of the people say about big data analytics. Uh, you know, they, they talk about the, the sector in India witnessing eightfold growth by 2025. Um, uh, but at the same time, they also talk about, you know, while this is growing, there's also going to be a talent shortfall in this area. Right? And the talent shortfall is, uh, you know, the operative word in that second phrase, which is there'll be a shortfall of 140 to 190,000 people with deep analytical skills, is the word deep. And one of the things that you will find uh, quite often is that, uh, you know, people tend to portray themselves or project themselves as specialists in the analytics area or in the big data area um, and, and fall short very quickly. And uh, this is very transparent to employers. This is very transparent to people who you're working with. Uh, it's not, doesn't take long for people to find that out. And so uh, the deep analytical skills is actually quite pertinent. And the only way to do that is to spend a little bit of time on it, uh, actually do hands-on work, um, you know, quick quick fixes rarely work here. Uh, so unfortunately, that that's you know the reality is it, it it will take a certain amount of time, effort, and and patience. Um, but you know, but but I think uh, it it's so essential that I wouldn't even call it you know the next big wave or even the wave that's here. I actually think this is how normal business is being done. So what is the fuss about? I mean, obviously, you know, companies have just talked about, you know, the big markets and the billions of dollars and all of that stuff. But people say that about a lot of different things. Um, you know, what, what's the fuss all about? Right. Well, the fuss is about the fact that, you know, these techniques have always existed, right? We've had analytics, we've had statistical modeling, we've had all of these areas for decades now. In fact, uh, an anecdote that that, uh, that I'd like to share with you is, you know, that recently, if you take a look at the trend over the last three to four years, you'll see a steady decline in the number of job postings that list statistics or a statistician as a title. And at the same time, you'll see the role of data scientist or data analyst increasing. Right? Um, causation and correlation issues aside, I don't think this is entirely coincidental and I don't I do think there is a, a little bit of rebranding going on here and why is that why is that going on it's because you know fundamentally analytics techniques have have started to move from uh, you know heavily sampled uh, contexts to much much larger uses of data right historically you know if you wanted to find out what a customer thought you would you know you had you could have millions of customers, but you would go and stand outside a showroom or you would go stand outside or, or run a survey. You would get a few data points. That's a sample. And then you would run that sample. You would run certain statistics on the sample and hope like hell that, you know, this is representative of how, you know, all of your customers or as an aggregate think. Right? This is how polling works for elections and so on. But now with just the, um, not just the amount of data that's produced, which is shown on the screen, you know, 40 zettabytes, um, is, is the estimated amount of data in the world in the next, in, in three years. Uh, you know, we produce a ridiculous amount of data every day. In fact, 95% of all the data that's ever been produced has been produced in just the last two years, right? So all of this, uh, 
uh, is happening because I mean, it, while all of this has been happening, we also have figured out ways to harness all of this uh, this data, right? So now, instead of standing with a clipboard uh, and and a survey uh, outside showrooms, you can actually get all of you know transaction data, people's web blogging history. You can get um, you know even the number of times people have put a particular product in a in a cart in the e-commerce context. You can get health data. You can get all of this data, and you can start to use it. So. Analytics and, and analysis has moved from just a sampling context. Uh, I'm not saying that's not important. I think that's in, in extremely important even today. But it's moved from just sampling as being the only tool in the box to now having machine learning techniques, um, you know, understanding larger uh, data analysis uh, techniques and so on. And so that's materially changed how business is done, how uh, people understand customers and uh, you know, and and pretty much all all of the the human faces behind all of the data. Okay. That's the industry. That's why it's important. That's how it's evolved, and that's where we are today. Okay. The question in your minds, I'm sure, is now: What's in it for me? What all of this evolution in the industry means? is that there is a significant demand for people who understand this, who understand not just this transformation of the industry, not just this particular transition of how things work, but also understand how you know, all the moving parts work, how systems interact with each other, how people interact with systems, what is available and what's possible, um, and then making the right choices. Right? So there are, there's, about a 50% um, on average higher salary for somebody who's in big data analytics careers versus traditional IT careers, you know, all other things being held constant, right? So for a comparable demographic background, age, and experience level, and so on. It's estimated that two lakh people uh, are going to be, you know, two lakh further people are going to be needed in data analysis and data science roles uh, over the coming years. It's estimated that there are 600 analytics firms in India. Now, obviously, not if all of them are really large firms, but that's a lot of different opportunities, big and small, um, for you to apply your trade. In fact, what that doesn't capture are just the hundreds and thousands of people who uh, are data science and data analysis practitioners as independent contractors, as consultants, as uh, business people in in quote unquote business roles. So these are not people who have anal analysis or analytics in their title or role whatsoever, but you could be in the marketing department, you could be in the finance team, uh, you could be in the admissions team at an educational institution, you could be, um, you know, in the operation side of, of a food delivery business. And, and whatever it is, you probably need to know some of this, right? And, and even if you don't understand every single element of the the analytical technique, you need to know what's available and what's possible, and at the very least, um, how to harness all of that uh, that information. So it's increasingly becoming pertinent to every one of you, uh, whether or not you want to become data scientists, uh, you know, even to become competent managers and competent technologists or competent business, business decision makers, I think it's starting to become a lot more relevant. You know, what are the Kind, what are the kinds of companies out there? Um, this is just a small sample of the you know, more uh, analytically rigorous companies that are operational and, and typically heavily recruit in India. Uh, the, the short answer is nearly every single company uh, is starting to use uh, analytics in some form, even if not big data analytics, right? I, I recently, just yesterday, spoke to uh, somebody who runs a furniture business um, who now uses, uh, you know, fairly sophisticated techniques to, you know, to keep track of inventory, to manage purchase orders, and all of these other things. And the reason she's able to do that is because it's a uh, uh, it's been commoditized, right? A lot of analytics techniques are now freely available. Uh, you know, you can, the, the packages, the programs, the techniques, uh, you know, they're single function calls sometimes. You, uh, they've, they've been demystified. They're no longer behind this, this cloak of complexity that's hard to parse. Uh, they're, they're out there, right? It's, it's a lot more visible. It's a lot more apparent. 
and uh, while big data technologies are not quite there yet, uh, it's only a matter of time. Uh, and the reason I say that is because if you look at some of the companies that are at the forefront of producing all of these big data technologies, a lot of these platforms are open source. Hadoop is an open source platform. Spark is an open source platform. Um, these are open source. And so unlike enterprise software or enterprise technologies um, back in the day, a lot of these things are, you know, can be used and ramped up fairly quickly by organizations small and big. So what kind of roles are we talking about? Um, look, I mean, it, data science is 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 just, uh, I think, honestly overused as a term uh, as far as recruitment and the recruiting cycle is concerned. Yeah. People, uh, you know, who used to do basic analysis on Excel files, uh, you know, have rebranded themselves as data scientists. Um, you know, there is a significant portion of statistics, there's a significant portion of understanding human behavior, of uh, you know, just basic operations, of management of, of points of data, um, of being able to present all of this information. All of that is largely, you know, loosely termed as data science. Uh, this, you know, I chose this chart for this particular um, uh, webinar because I think it's, while it's messy and cluttered and, and and actually, honestly, quite un ugly looking, I think it captures a lot of what uh, data science really is. When people say data science, they could be, you know, obviously data science it falls in that, in that, you know, that gray circle right in the middle, um, uh, which has components of all these different elements, um, you know, in that Venn diagram, but, um, but you could be any one of the you could you could have a background in any one of these areas or none of these areas and and start to you know call yourself a data scientist so when people say data science they could mean statistician right somebody who understands statistics uh, being able to understand the mean median and mode of of data um, being able to pull statistical inferences from it being able to make predictions based on it doing a regression uh, it could mean somebody who works on pattern recognition, which says, okay, I've looked at 10 data points of a particular kind, and then, you know, I can make a prediction about the 11th data point. Um, you know, they could understand machine learning algorithms, which then is a subset of the larger artificial intelligence area. Right? Uh, you know, you could be, you could just understand human behavior really well and, and be able to apply, um, you know, a very data-driven approach to understanding human behavior. Right, understanding purchase patterns, understanding uh, what drives and motivates people, and and you know and be more cognitive and neuroscience focused. You could be an operations research person. Um, you know, tr traditionally you might you might have looked at logs and orders and inventory management and a whole range of other classically management techniques um, in the operations side, and but now be able to do it in a much more structured and rigorous way using data science tools. Um, you could be in the data mining industry, which is trying to, you know, extract uh, you know, order out of chaos, if you will, and, and pull particular pieces of relevant information. Or you could just be somebody who has historically managed um, vast data stores. You could be a database person or a data warehousing person. And in the new world, you now have to understand big data and how it's, how analysis is applied to it. Right. So. What does data science entail? It in, entails everything, right? You need to know a little bit about the business problem that you're trying to solve. Um, you need to, so you need to have some domain knowledge. You need to understand how to, um, you know, structure the problem uh, just right. You need to be able to solve that problem using certain analytical techniques. You need to be able to translate that into business uh, context, and then you need to be able to present that information that makes sense to the user. And that user could be internal, a business partner, or it could be somebody outside. So it is fundamentally a multidisciplinary role. So there is no one path to getting there. Um, on the plus side, what that means is that you could be on any one of these branches, um, even you know, even further out from here, and and still, you know, start to understand that center uh, as long as you traverse that branch. So because it's such a multidisciplinary field, it you know takes time, but it also means that everybody. Uh, in any of these areas can actually get there. So let's demystify some of the roles you might hear. Um, we just established the data science itself could be, you know, one of 
10 different things. Um, when people say, hey, I want to work in data science, they might actually be more inclined to say, I want to work in visualization. They might be more inclined to say, I want to work in machine learning. Some might say, hey, I want to work with actual data and, and manipulative data. Some might say, I want to work with databases. Right? Correspondingly, you also have roles that they work on. So a data scientist um, is, you know, is, is typically, okay, I'll take the purest view. It's somebody who uses a combination of you know, analysis techniques, complex modeling, and, and understanding of the business context to figure out, you know, what is the appropriate modeling technique and data set to use. Right? So at the, at the heart of it, a really good data scientist needs to understand the business user. You need to understand the context. You need to be, then make the appropriate choice of analysis of um, analysis technique, you need, then need to be able to make a choice of uh, appropriate kind of data to use, um, and then run, also run the uh, analysis models. Typically, except in in the in the simpler use cases, a data scientist is is usually a data science team, and right? because every one of these areas, uh, as you start to get deeper and deeper and start to specialize, starts to become uh, you know a whole beast of its own. Uh, if you move up that ladder, um, whether you go from the IT side or whether or you go from the data management side or from the data science side, you could become the chief data officer or the CTO who is a very data-driven CTO. Uh, this is when you have to make decisions organizationally and not just on the problem you're solving, but on the whole you know, possible space of problems you could be solving as an organization and, and you make decisions on what kind of technologies we need to have, what kind of services we will use, what kind of techniques we should be using, what are the trade-offs in terms of server and hardware and software and all of these other things. And, and it's not trivial because you're not just looking at use use um, use cases in, in the sense of, you know, what do we do now and what are the problems we're solving now, but you're looking more broadly at what are we likely to do. So it does take uh, a lot of maturity, uh, understanding you know, technology, but also understanding the business and understanding the evolution of both technology and business and, and then making appropriate choices. Data analysts, on the other hand, tend to be a step, um, I wouldn't say necessarily a step below data scientists because again, these, these terms are used very loosely across the industry. So sometimes a data analyst uh, might be on par with or, or even above a data scientist, depending on which organization you're in. But, but let's take this hypothetical you know, perfect organization we're talking about, then typically a data, a team of data analysts will build, validate, and maintain, you know, the analytical models that are laid out by the data scientist. So, you know, think about it this way. You have a chief data officer on the technology side. You have a data scientist, um, you know, working with that chief technology officer, sometimes reporting to them, sometimes not. And then you have an, a team of data analysts who, you know, once the data scientist has made the choice of particular techniques and models and so on, um, and has broken down the problem into manageable pieces, the data analysts then solve the problems. They are the, the ones who are doing the actual modeling and maintaining of the data and so on. Big data engineers um, tend to come from a, a data management perspective um, and tend to be more um, uh, closer to, you know, uh, data managers and developers than they are uh, statisticians or modeling experts. So once you've figured out what kind of uh, analytical technique you want to use, that choice is typically only made once every you know, a couple of weeks or months, uh, depending on the context of the kinds of problems you're working on. The data engineer then, uh, you know, has to understand the broad, uh, the whole range of technologies that are on offer, um, the kinds of uh, you know, the kinds of computational demands that um, that a particular technique has, understanding where the, the data is going to come from, uh, how should you actually implement it, how do you troubleshoot if you have issues, and, and so on. Um, so they, obviously they could be called a whole host of things from you know software engineer, data engineer, big data engineer, and so on, depending on the company, but that's a class of, uh, of roles there. And finally, you have uh, more of a, 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 a solutions architect, and a solutions architect is no different in the big data context than it is in the regular software context. And these are problem solvers. These are people who piece various parts of the puzzle together. And so they typically, um, you know, this is more of a consultative role. Uh, they could be external consultants. They could also be internal consultants within an organization. They have to estimate and design the technology needs, have a technology roadmap laid out. 
um, figure out and, and draw the data map, uh, understand sources of data, how you're going to use them, where you're going to use them, in what capacity you're going to use them, in what scale you're going to use them, um, and therefore the implications on how the whole, whole thing is architected. Uh, and they typically work quite closely with the CTO or the chief data officer. Now, this is by no means comprehensive. Um, I've only listed some of the more common roles here. Uh, but you know, but there could be a whole host of uh, of, of roles that uh, um, that you could be working on. Uh, I've seen a couple of questions trickle in, so what I'm going to do is uh, just to let you know that I'm just going to quickly run through what I intended to cover. I'll pause somewhere in the middle, take a couple of questions, then I'll proceed to the program, and then I'll take a few more questions. So. I've explained, you know, why it's important. I've explained a little bit about, you know, what data science is and what the various roles are. Um, let's let's say you're sold, right? You understand the importance of it. You understand why this is important to you, uh, and and so your obvious next question is, okay, so what do I need to do? To, I need to do to get that. Right. What do you need to have? You need to have strong quantitative skills. You need to like data. You need to like number. Well, I wouldn't say numbers per se because not all data is numerical. But you need to like looking at um, information right, that that comes in and and drawing conclusions from it. You might be the person who loves, uh, you know, just exploring stats on cricket. For if you, if you like cricket, or you could be somebody who tries to analyze. Uh, shopping trends. You might be somebody who tries to, you know, understand traffic patterns and tries to game the system to try and avoid traffic. You know, all of that is using some kind of analytical and quantitative uh, approach to understanding information that's coming in and and making sense of it. It definitely helps to have programming experience. Um, now, most of this data is manipulated. We're not yet at a point where it's a you know, simple drag and drop kind of uh, GUI interface to manage all of the data that works seamlessly. Um, you might need to understand, you know, even, even to, to run some of these simpler analysis uh, elements, you might need to, you know, create uh, matrices, you might need to, you know, work with data, you might need to integrate data. So it helps to have programming experience. Now, do you need to be an expert developer? Do you need to be among the top 10% of your computer science class? No. What you need to do is understand data. You need to understand what data structures are. You need to understand how information, how programs are written. Um, and it helps to have done active programming for the last two, three years at least, if not more. Um, anything more is, is great, but this is kind of the, uh, the minimum you need. Like I said, you'll, you know, a logical and analytical mind just goes with the strong quantitative skills I said earlier. You know, you don't need to be, um, you know, vastly experienced in in Excel files or or data tables or databases or any of that stuff. What you need is a a way of methodically approaching a problem, um, figuring out, you know, how to collect data points or information, how to get information about what it is that you need to answer a particular question and then go and get it and then run you know various analyses more than all of that though you need to you need to actually really love to learn um, and and the reason for this is fairly simple right the the tools and techniques okay so statistical techniques have existed for a while but nearly every year you have a, a host of new techniques the flavor of the month seems to be deep learning um, last year it was something else the year before that it was something else and every year you have a new uh, you know cool toy that everybody wants to implement and you need to learn what this is you need to understand you know whether or not this is suitable for you um, and then make an appropriate choice so if you're not if you're the kind of person who says you know I, I like to master a very narrow skill and and become really good at it and just use that for the next 30 years you're going to struggle uh, if, you, if you don't if you don't have this um, urge to constantly and this is look i mean honestly this is this is probably true of the way industry is moving in general so this is not specific to these set of roles or this area um, learning to learn has just become a baseline skill but but in particular because this is still a volatile environment and new technologies and new techniques are developing every day i think this is particularly important and finally you do need a knack for interpretation right so you need to understand you know how do you translate a business problem into an analytical problem how do you then convert an analytical solution back to a business solution and so on 
above all, like I said earlier, you need to have patience. Right? I, I look, I, I talk to a number of people, nearly every single admission cycle, where people keep saying, you know what, I want to do this course, I want to get, I want to go and, you know, uh, you know, jump on that bandwagon, and, and suddenly everybody will start respecting me as a data scientist. No, this is, at the end of the day, um, a, a way of working. It's a way of managing information. It's a way of Harnessing the power of a, a whole host of tools. It's not it's not a quick fix um, So you need to be patient uh, This might disappoint some of you who are looking for a you know looking for you know either big data or analytics as, as, a, as a field to quickly uh, get started on That you can do you can quickly get started right so the the, the entry barrier has actually dropped dramatically uh, Ten years ago, if you wanted to become a data scientist, uh, or if you wanted to dabble in data science and learn a little bit about it, you needed to become a very proficient programmer, you needed to learn how to scrape data, you needed to learn to work with complex data sets, and so on. A lot of that has been made simpler. There are now layers and layers of tools that have made things really easy to use, so you can start very quickly. But for you to become proficient enough to get really good, uh, and to a point where people will respect you and start to call on you for to solve specific problems, it takes a few years. Um, I mean, let's not forget, if, if you're already in the workforce, it's taken you, you know, three, five, seven, whatever years of experience you have to get to your current point, right? And you probably know a couple of tools, you know a few techniques. Now, you need to think about it the same way when you're trying to learn a new set of tools and techniques, right? So, so it takes you a while to get there. Um, and this is a survey that was done by KD Nuggets, which is, uh, which is a, uh, a great repository uh, and a great source of information if you want to understand things about you know data science um, and and you know this is how long it, people say it takes uh, you know for them to you know, become comfortable with data science so as you can see there's a big peak around the two to eight years experience right so even if you take the two to four years and if you're very very diligent it takes two to four years right so you need to work on it. You need to work on it patiently before people start respecting you. Now, does that mean you can? You have to wait two to four years before you can start working in data science? No, but it does take two to four years before you can become um, proficient and good and and be known for being a data scientist. So, what do you need to learn? Right? And, and this is why it takes time. Uh, so obviously you need to understand statistical foundations. These things have been around since the 1940s, some of the more elemental techniques. You need to understand a little bit about the data side of things. Where is all of the, the data coming from? How do you manage it and store it and so on? Uh, you need to understand, okay, big data technologies, if you want to work with big data, that's not mandatory. You could become an analytical person even without understanding big data. But um, if you do want to work with big data, which is increasingly becoming more pertinent, then yeah, you need to understand some of those. You need to understand some of the analytical techniques that go beyond basic statistical foundations. Um, machine learning techniques are, are some of them. Um, and, and finally, you need to be able to tell compelling stories using visualization. Right? These days, it's no longer enough to say, hey, I've understood it and this is the answer. People don't trust you. You need to show them why and show them how and, and be able to, uh, you know, be able to bring people along uh, with your storytelling technique visually. So that's a lot of stuff. Um, I'll pause here, I'll take a couple of the questions that have come through and then we'll get into, uh, you know, just a little bit about the program itself. And so somebody asked, what's the difference between a data analyst and a big data analyst? Um, it's the difference between data and big data, right? Now, uh, a data analyst tends to, look, you, a big data analyst is a subset of data analysts, right? And they tend to work with big data. They tend to work with, uh, you know, really, really large terabytes and petabytes of information with complex data sets, with things that are not in relational databases, that, you know, with information that's stored across as text blobs, that's stored as, um, you know, transaction logs and so on. Um, integrate all of that, work on a distributed cluster to get relatively quick responses, uh, you know, deal with real-time data and so on. So. Uh, you know, the, some of the analysis techniques might be the same, but the complexity of the data stores and the, and the, you know, the volume and the speed of information that's coming in might, might require you to use certain big data tools and therefore you become a big data analyst. Um, so the other question is, being from a testing background, what is the programming experience required? Um, look, it, 
I, it's hard to say, it depends on what you were testing, but a testing doesn't necessarily require programming experience at all. Right now, if, if I was testing a website, if I was testing, um, you know, a particular uh, software application, I need to be methodical. I need to have uh, a structure and a process behind how I'm testing, uh, you know, various scenarios. And then I need to be able to, uh, you know, I need to have an, an eye for detail. And that's about it. Whereas, you know, you need to have actually worked with data. You need to have manipulated data. You need to have, you know, built in, you need to have, you know, uh, you need to understand how information flows, how data is manipulated, how basic programming constructs like for loop and if and then and all of that works. You need to be able to know what a function call is, what a function is and so on. Um, and if you don't have that, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you know, none of that is rocket science. Uh, there are hundreds of programs, you know, uh, education programs out there that are trying to te teach you know six and eight year old girls and boys how to program so if they can learn it you can learn it um, but you do need to understand how all, how you know programs and how you know, a set of instructions which is what a computer programmer at the end of the day is how that translates into certain actions um, Okay, so the other question is, I'm learning uh, SAS, R, and Python, but to handle big data, what tools should I learn to? Um, honestly, if you know R and Python um, quite well, uh, you should be able to do a lot of big data uh, things. Uh, so a lot of, you know, for example, Apache Spark um, has an R and a Python interface, uh, Python being the more mature interface for Spark. Um, and you can write Python code that actually runs on, on Apache Spark, and, and that happens uh, fairly organically. Uh, so, so that can work fairly well. Um, you will still potentially need to learn a whole host of uh, just the syntax and, and the context of how certain tools work, whether it's Hadoop or whether it's Spark or uh, you know, any of these different uh, you know, tools out there. Uh, you'll hear a host of things from Scoop and Flume and things like that. But, but it, um, R and Python are a good start. SAS is, is a completely different environment because it's, it's closed, it's not, it doesn't integrate with other things. It's a, it's a, it's an enterprise software to itself. I mean, it's not even enterprise. I mean, it's a software tool to itself. Um, but R and Python will help you get that. Now, if you're using R and Python just, uh, just calling the uh, analysis packages and working on them, that may not be enough. But you do need to understand a little bit beyond that. Uh, final question before I move on: Which is best, cloud or big data carrier? I don't think there's an either or. Um, I, I mean, you're talking about various aspects of the same process right so you have um, you have data that is stored somewhere you need like you know we, you need to access and manipulate and, and use that data that's big data where is that data stored ultimately it's stored on the cloud um, you're using clusters of computers that are um, you know you could be using an amazon web service or uh, aws ec uh, aws uh, kind of environment you could be using microsoft azure whatever environment you're using that information is then used on the cloud i you know this is all part of the same um, always on distributed computing for large and complex data stores that are stored in, um, you know, in kind of this virtualized cloud environment uh, context, right? So all of these things that you're talking about, cloud, big data, um, uh, cloud computing, some of the distributed computing elements within that, they're all related. Uh, so it's not, you know, it's not either or. Okay, I'm going to move on as uh, just to give you a brief overview about the program, and then I can come back and take a couple more questions. <clears throat> so, the postgraduate program in big data analytics, right? So, what is this program specifically? It's a 12-month executive program. Um, it's designed for working professionals. Uh, it's meant to, uh, you know, to help you as somebody who's currently in the workforce and who doesn't want to leave, or doesn't want to, or cannot leave for various practical reasons. Um, it's, it's designed to help you become very competent um, in, in, in the technical aspects of big data analytics, right? Like I said, you know, you, you can be a business person who understands some of the business context of analytic, analytics and analysis, but uh, this program is designed for people who actually want to build these systems, who actually want to do the analysis, who want to understand where data is coming from and where data is going. So that's, uh, uh, it is for the technology professional who wants to continue to stay on the technology side of things. It is, uh, it's a blended program, 
what this means is that unlike uh, some of the online programs you might have seen, whether they're the global ones like Udacity and Coursera, or the you know the the, the ones that are that are more um, you know structurally designed for India, these have a very strong classroom element. Um, what we've done is is focused a lot of the classroom learning on you know heavy interaction with the faculty, peer to peer learning, understanding and meeting each other. You know, one of the things we've learned over the many years we've been doing these programs is people learn as much from each other as they do from uh, the person who's standing in front of them and teaching them. And that's something that's so crucial to groups learning together that uh, we don't want to take that away. And that's where the classroom comes in. But at the same time, historically, when we had the old classroom environment, you know, there was, there was somebody teaching in class, you had a, a one hour class or a two hour class, and then you went home and then that's it. Right? Whereas now that, that engagement continues to stay. You have an online platform where you can ask questions, you can have discussions with each other, you can um, you know, look for resources, you can practice these programming assignments. We have an always on lab 24 seven accessible to you so you can continue to work on these problems. So there is, um, there is a lot of on-demand elements here. Um, you know, some people take one hour to learn a concept, some people take five hours. Uh, you know, some people need uh, you know, 20 minutes of practice on a programming assignment and some people need 20 hours. And the, uh, the beauty of this is because the classroom sessions only happen at discrete times, uh, you know, usually spaced out by three to four weeks, uh, you have a lot of time to catch up if you're lagging behind or to explore more if you're, you know, if you're done with your work and, and kind of pace yourself and learn by doing. Uh, it's also co-developed and endorsed by by analytics companies and you know industry professionals more more broadly. Um, look, these are not meant to be uh, you know research courses. These are not meant to be absolute cutting edge uh, uh, in the sense that we're not talking about things that you know that are only in research labs or at universities right now. We're talking about things that you know, that are practically used by companies day in and day out and that people will respect and want to hire people for. Uh, so we do work very closely with, with folks who are in the industry. In fact, some of them will come and teach some of your classes. And, you know, the, while Big Data Analytics program is, is, um, is less than a year old, it is, you know, we've been doing uh, analytics programs for, for many years now. In fact, the RPGPB ABI analytics program, the, the business analytics program was ranked number one in the country. Uh, so we have a deep expertise. We have expert faculty who are consistently rated among the, you know, the top faculty uh, in the country. Um, in fact, you know, I, I think it's one of the analytics magazines has, has an uh, annual rating of the top 10 analytics faculty in the country. And, um, uh, as, were the only, as was the only organization, I think, outside of one of the IMs, I think IM Bangalore or something like that, that had two faculty members. Both are, you know, our premier faculty members in the top 10. So, so I think it's, uh, it says something about the depth of expertise we had. So why is this course unique? Um, look, uh, there, are, there are three elements that I want to have focus on, right? It's not just that these are the, four, these are the themes that emerge, these are the things that we design around. We designed for this to be a hands-on course, so there is no, uh, you know, there is no emphasis on written exams and semester and and all of that stuff. You are doing stuff that is being evaluated every single day, uh, so nearly every class day. In fact, every residency, what we call a residency, which is, uh, you know, the weekend intensives where you have classrooms sessions, you're doing stuff. You're doing stuff in class. You're doing stuff to submit at home. This is the only way you're going to learn. Right? You're building a portfolio of work that you're doing so that when you go out into the companies um, or to your own company, you're not telling them, oh, I learned this, this, and this, and you know, how, do they, how do they know you know it? They'll have to hire you and hope for the best. Right? No, this way you get to show them. You get to show what you've done. You get to show what your capstone project was, what your mini projects were, what kind of work, uh, data you worked on, and you get to practice and practice and practice. That's why we set up a, uh, an online cloud lab that's available 24-7 through your computer. You could be sitting on a beach somewhere and you get to your program. Assignment. It is heavily industry focused. Like I said, it's, you know, we work with industry folks to both teach and design the curriculum and tweak the curriculum constantly so that you're, you're learning the tricks of the trade. Um, so that it's not just some academic concept out there, that, that it's pertinent and relevant to you. And finally, you're doing this while you work. Right? Every element of this entire learning experience, the entire year long learning experience, from the time you walk in the door to the time you leave, has been designed 
to make it convenient and and uh, and effective for you to learn while you're working so yeah, classes are on weekends only there's enough of a gap between classes that you can you can do your programming assignments on weekends even if you have a busy work week um, we have a robust online platform where you can communicate and, and do some of your work all of that is with the intention that you get to uh, you know you have you don't have to take a single day off work while you're do, doing this program so what do you learn in the program there are four interconnected streams of learning Right now, we've classified these uh, kind of as four separate buckets, but they do interact quite heavily. The first is statistical and technical foundations. This is the foundation stone. Right? This is what you need to know some basic stats. You need to know probability. You need to understand some of the technology um, elements around it, and then you, you can only build from there. The second um, are big data technologies. Uh, so your Hadoop and Spark and a whole host of other things you've worked, you've learned to, um, or you've heard about. Once you've learned basic analysis, which is the statistical analysis, and how do you deal with large amounts of data, now you can build on it and say, okay, how do I get more and more advanced with you know, various machine learning algorithms, um, and then how do I do that on big data? And finally, this is some, the, the fourth element, which is visualization and communicating insight. It's only put there as a fourth stream of learning, but this, if you think about it, runs horizontally through the entire program. It, uh, every time you do something, whether it's exploring data that's just come in, or whether it's um, you know uh, producing insight there from from a set of analyses, you you need to visualize it and, and show it to people. Um, so so this next slide talks a little bit about the kinds of things you work on. Um, so the statistical foundations, for example, you know if there's everything around you know an approach and a framework to to building an experiment uh, using a hypothesis to to come up with what kind of analysis you should be you should be doing um, you know understanding basic probability stats and so on uh, you know if you go down that chain the techniques get more advanced you have supervised learning unsupervised learning you get you know when you work with you know 37 features or dimensions you then get to you know reduce some of those dimensions down to manageable uh, amounts you get to build complex recommendation systems like the ones at Amazon or Netflix or any of these um, you get to build graphical models like the ones in social networks. Um, but at the same time, you can also move to the right top corner, which is some of the big data technologies, because not all, not, not all information will be clean, not all information will be manageable. Some, sometimes you get really large, complex data sets that you need to work with, uh, and the big data technologies help you, um, you know, manage all of that. And finally, on the bottom right, as I said, visualization and insight. Um, you know, quite often people talk about visualization as something that you do at the end to present your data uh, on a slide. No, uh, you use visualization even to explore the data to make sense of what's even coming in and therefore what kind of technique you use. So visualization is something you do at every step of the uh, of the analysis or the data science uh, you know, life cycle. Uh, a quick snapshot of the, you know, of some of the experts who will be, who, you know, who could be teaching you. Um, now, not all of these people will always be teaching you. It's it's always a mix. You know, every topic people have specialties in, and you know, it's, a, it's always a mix of people. But Dr. Kavi Mahesh is the program director. He's, you know, a world-renowned uh, researcher. Uh, he's done his PhD at one of the premier universities, it has worked with knowledge representation, natural language processing, a whole host of uh, you know, fairly advanced analytics techniques. Uh, the next two people you see there, Dr. P.K. Vishwanathan and Dr. Uh, uh, Bappa, they have both, those are the two professors I mentioned who have been ranked in the top 10 analytics faculty in the, in the country. Um, Dr. Sravishi Basu you know, has, has worked, again, got her PhD abroad, has worked in, um, in, in a lot of, uh, you know, really, really advanced uh, roles at, at, at very sophisticated organizations. But that's mixed with, as you can see, some really stellar industry experts. Right? Uh, Dr. Nitin Agarwal heads the big data and the data science practice at, at, a, at, a, at a consulting company and previously worked for 14 years as a, as a professor at IIM Indore in operations research in, in some of these areas. 
um, Ullas Nambiar, who, you know, heads Zensar's, uh, you know, AI and data science kind of SWAT team, uh, but also was a data, senior data scientist or head of data science at Mintra before this. Uh, Pradeepta has, you know, head, again is the chief data scientist and machine learning and AI practice at Mafra in analytics, but also has deep and and fairly um, uh, diverse set of skills. Uh, he's even writing a book uh, in machine learning and, and in data science. Uh, so, so you do have, you know, some real horsepower here, both from people who've been practicing this in the industry for many years and people who've been on the research side of things. And like I said, you know, some of the organizations represented here, you know, your analytics specialty firms like Absolute Data, Genpact, uh, EXL, Value Labs, you know, but also your um, financial organizations, your consulting organizations. Uh, we work with a lot of them to, to, to both create and then constantly tweak and to deliver these programs. Now, you heard a lot from me about what data science is, what the program is, is this the right program for you? Look, it is the right program if you're a technology professional who wants to stay in technology and move into one of the many big data analytics roles I mentioned. Right? Uh, and, and it could just be an aspiration, but if you do aspire to it, then you need to put in the hard yards, you need to work on a rigorous um, kind of program, and you need to, out, even outside this program, continue to keep doing. Right? And that's the third point there, which is you need to be keen to learn by doing. If, if you just want to skim and understand a little bit of how all this works, that's not enough. Um, you know, I mean, there are other programs, shorter programs, where you could, you could get some of that, but this is for you to learn to become proficient and competent so that tomorrow when you go back to the workplace, you're able to actually work on it. Um, okay, so what do you need? Right? Uh, it's not enough for you to have the desire. Uh, obviously, you need to have a bachelor's degree if you want to do this because this is a postgraduate program. Um, you need to have a minimum of two years of full-time work experience and you need to have programmed uh, for a couple of years. Right Now, I, I'm not saying you need to be a Python expert or an R expert or whatever. Um, like I said, those are all tools of the trade. You can pick those up um, as long as you are proficient and comfortable with the concept of programming um, and working with data, preferably with SQL. But, it, you know, but like I said, we're, we're fairly agnostic in terms of what kind of language you work in. And you do need to understand enough mathematics and statistics to be able to pick up on the analysis and analytics techniques. And this is, look, let's be honest, if you don't have some of these prerequisites, you will, um, we're setting you up to fail in the program, right? Uh, one in a hundred people who don't meet these criteria will actually succeed in this program. And therefore, it doesn't make sense, uh, you know, for, for, to, to give you all of the, the false hope when you start. Um, you know, we would like to set you up for success and, and that's why prerequisites exist. But if you are, if you have some of these areas, and for example, if you don't know Python or R, and and you know you've been working in a different programming language, we do have free work that gets you up to speed. Um, we'll share that with you beforehand, and and we expect that in the in the weeks that lead up to the program, you would have worked on that, and and therefore when you start the program, you will at least be able to catch up. Who should not pursue this course? Um, look, this pro this course is not this program is not for everybody. If you are from a business side and you just want to understand a little bit uh, enough to be intelligent, to hold an intelligent conversation about what all these space, uh, all these different tools and techniques are, there are easier ways to do it, and and that's not um, that's not this problem. Uh, if you want to learn a very specific tool because you have a problem, either because you want a certification or because you have a particular problem to solve at work right now, you know, go to Stack Overflow, uh, take a course or a course on that particular topic. Uh, do something very targeted, but this, but this program is meant to be rigorous and, and, and more comprehensive, um, and therefore this may not be the, the best course for you. A question we get asked a lot is about placement. Is there placement assistance? Look, you're, you're mid-career professionals, right? You guys have been in the workforce for a while. Companies don't come and hire en masse the way they do when you're undergraduate um, students or, or MBAs. Uh, there's no getting placed. Um, I honestly don't don't even like that phrase. Right? I think that phrase is misleading for the mid-career professional because placement um, assumes that somebody is making that decision to, to put you in a particular position. Uh, mid-career choices are not made that way. Mid-career choices are made because you proactively ha have 
expressed a desire to work in a particular area and have demonstrated competence in a set of skills that's required to succeed in that area and the companies make a judgment call on whether or not they want you. Mid-career hiring tends to be one-on-one, -on -one. it tends to be targeted, it tends to be as needed. So it doesn't make sense to have this whole traditional placement process in, in this in this space. And 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 I would you know I would even hazard a guess to say that that any mid-career um, inter educational program that promises placements is is either misleading or have a trick up their sleeve that, that none of us know about. What we do though is set you up for success. Um, you know, we have career development workshops. We, you know, we help you understand the way, you know, what it takes to, to get set up to succeed in analytics careers. We have a number of alumni that we can connect you to. Um, you know, we, we have industry connections that, that uh, it, you know, people come in from industry and speak uh, through industry sessions and guest lectures and, and they're valuable resources. You know, um, so, sometimes you know people even get hired internally. Right? We, we've had numerous examples. In fact, nearly every class that we graduate has an example of somebody hiring or rec uh, recommending a classmate into a role that, uh, that that they wanted. And finally, we do make lateral opportunities available to you. A number of our partner companies uh, share some of these opportunities with us, and we make them uh, constantly available to you on our online platform. But, but we do everything, all of these things, to help you get set up for success. Now, as a mid-career professional, as somebody who wants to take, you know, control your own destiny, it's up to you to then take it from there and, and go on and, and actually, you know, succeed in the interview, show people what you know, and then and go on to get those jobs. All right, so the minute's up. Uh, I'm going to wrap up here. Uh, thank you, everybody, for um, you know for participating in this webinar. Uh, again, if you have information, if you have questions, you know our our contact information is on the screen. So please feel free to reach out. Uh, but otherwise, I uh, wish you all the success uh, in in your career and in, in this journey that you're about to embark on. And uh, yeah, and and uh, good luck and happy learning. Thank you.